Someday, in the not so distant future, it happens. The moment you realize you're ready for anything. Get a degree in emergency management from Jacksonville State University and be ready for where you're going. This is the Weather Extreme video, the morning edition for Tuesday the 18th. I'm James Spann. Uh, maybe a few showers through midweek here, but clearly the big headline for the rest of the week will be the chance of severe storms Thursday night, as you will see. Uh, we'll take a look at the situation this morning. It is an active zonal flow across the nation. The surface boundary that came in here last night, kind of pushed south by that wave to the north, is stalled out. It's now parallel to the upper air winds. And uh, that thing will move northward as a warm front uh, later today or tonight. And so while we are temporarily in dry air, uh, not going to stay in place for long. And yeah, you can pick out that front this morning. It's 30 in Decatur, 61 in Montgomery at 4 a.m. And again, the front's just not going to move much uh, this morning. Then it meanders northward later today. Hey, around the nation, it's uh, starting to thaw out a little bit. That's the warmest looking map we've seen in weeks and weeks. Although it's still brutally cold up in northern New England. On the watch warning map, we've got that uh, dense fog advisory around here over into uh, Mississippi. Winter storm warnings for parts of New England. And for a few counties up in Washington State and Idaho. But generally speaking, things are pretty quiet this morning. The big story is the potential for severe weather on Thursday and Thursday night. This is the standard slight risk as defined by the Storm Prediction Center Thursday and Thursday night. It runs from uh, around Slidell, Louisiana to near Cleveland and Detroit. And that includes a pretty large percentage of the state of Alabama. And within that, there is an enhancement, that 30% zone that would include north and west Alabama, basically uh, areas along north of Interstate 59, uh, with the 15%, the standard risk, going all the way down to just north of Mobile. And this will be for us mainly Thursday night. The prime threat will be from strong straight-line winds. As you'll see, we'll take a look at all the uh, metrics here in just a minute. And then the following day on day four, which is Friday, there's a risk of severe weather east of the state from near Macon, Georgia, up to uh, the coast of New Jersey. But let's take a look uh, off the GFS. This is the OZ run valid at, uh, uh, well, actually, this is valid earlier this morning at 6 o'clock. But you get the idea. We, we got that strong short wave coming through New England. And down below that, this is at noon today. We've got a stalled surface boundary near US 80. You see that deeper moisture just below that boundary. And what's going to happen, that thing begins to work its way northward this afternoon. And this is the high-res NAM valid at 2 o'clock, suggesting some light rain or showers could break out north of that boundary as it moves north around here. And I think that's probably a wise thing to do in the forecast. We had initially talked about a dry day today, but after looking at that, yeah, we might want to mention the chance of a shower this afternoon. Nothing widespread or heavy, just a chance through tonight. And then tomorrow, uh, they'll be in a fairly moist air mass, but there's no real dynamic support for rain. So we'll mention a chance of scattered rain showers tomorrow. I would say the sky will be mostly cloudy, and the high will be in the mid to upper 60s. The weather will be mild. This is Thursday. Here comes that dynamic trough out of the Great Plains. Down below that, a vigorous 994 millibar low is just north of St. Louis at midday, with a trailing front down to Little Rock and uh, College Station, Texas. And around here Thursday will be a mild and windy day. The high will be up in the mid-70s. By golly, the GFS is printing a high of 76. That's within two degrees of the record high. And you don't want to see those in February because typically that means at some point you pay the price. And sure enough, here comes the uh, band of convection. This is uh, midnight Thursday night. Surface load down to 978 millibars over Lake Michigan, and uh, you can see the squall line coming in here, followed by a push of, of cooler air. 
The instability values are getting a little higher with each run. This is the surface-based CAPE, valid at 9 o'clock Thursday night. You can see now we've got uh, values to uh, 1,000 joules, kind of pushing into West Alabama. Uh, so that is certainly sufficient for severe weather here in the cool season. Uh, the wind fields remain very strong. This is the low-level jet. Now, farther north, the wind fields are running at like 70 knots. And down here, they are in the 50 and 60 knot range. And it's not going to take a lot to bring that down to the surface. Uh, and that could clearly be enough to knock down some trees and power lines. This could be a fairly widespread uh, damaging wind event, looking at those wind fields from North Alabama all the way up north to uh, Ohio. This is the uh, helicity from zero to one kilometers, storm relative helicity. And those numbers are fairly high, and that would certainly support some uh, rotating updrafts. If there are breaks or kinks in the line, there could be an isolated tornado. Uh, these would not be the large, violent tornadoes. These would typically be small, short-lived ones, but it's not out of the question. But clearly, the main threat will be from strong straight-line winds. And this is the EHI, the Energy Helicity Index, at 9 o'clock Thursday night. And again, uh, you can see there is a unit of one near Meridian, Mississippi. So uh, in terms of timing, uh, I would say uh, 6 o'clock Thursday evening until 3 o'clock Friday morning. And we can uh, fine-tune that as we get closer. But I think that's going to be the main uh, nine-hour window for this thing, for this part of the state. All right, Friday, everything is on by. Uh, the sky becomes partly sunny. The day will be a little cooler with a high around 60. But the weekend looks pretty good. This is Saturday. The day should be sunny. High would be in the low to mid 60s if this is right. And, you know, the GFS has kind of been wavering with this idea of a wave on the front and rain on Sunday. Well, the consistency is building that uh, that's not going to happen. Uh, this run dry as a bone. And for now, we're not going to mention rain on Sunday. The high would be in the low 60s. The sky would be sunny. So at this point, the weekend looks rain-free with uh, lows in the 30s, but fairly comfortable afternoons. And a week from today, we're still dry with a good deal of sunshine. Uh, this is middle of next week, Wednesday the 26th. Troughing is rebuilding over the east, ridging building over the west, and all of a sudden it starts to look colder again. That old 540 line comes down toward Birmingham. Strong cold air advection with a good north wind. So uh, like we say, don't you even think about putting up the jackets, the winter clothes. Check the weather on March 3rd as we uh, get into tornado season. Ooh, look at that uh, feature in the southern branch of the jet stream. A deep upper low over Louisiana with a big old wet down. But that looks kind of anomalous. That probably is going to disappear on the next run. And on the 5th. Nothing harshly cold. That would be relatively mild, but maybe a few showers out there. That's it for the Weather Extreme video today. We'll have notes on the blog. Next video here by 7 o'clock this evening. And if you can, catch us on ABC 3340 News this evening, the live stream of the television side at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and God bless.